The simile of the raft is one of the Buddha's most famous similes. You take the raft to go over the flood, and then when you get to the other side, you leave it there. You don't carry it around on your head. It's well known. It reminds us not to hold on to views when they're no longer necessary. But one aspect of the simile that's often overlooked is that flood. The Buddha said it's the fourfold flood. The flood of sensuality, becoming, views, and ignorance. And yet that raft, the Eightfold Path, made out of the twigs and branches on this side of the river, also includes right view. So there are certain views you use to get over the flood of views. And it's important that you learn how to distinguish the two. We live in a society where people define themselves by their views. A lot of them are based on the fact that we're staking out our territory. We're feeding off of a limited range of resources. And there's a sense of competition for territory. Think about that image in Kurt Vonnegut's novel, The Sirens of Titan, the harmoniums on Mercury. In his vision, Mercury is this huge honeycomb crystal, one side always facing the sun, another side always facing outer space. Because of the difference in temperature, the crystal is humming. And these little animals, harmoniums, they're shaped like kites with little suction cups on the corners, a little bit translucent. They don't feed off of one another, they feed off of the vibrations. So an infinite source of food, no need to compete. And they send messages to each other. And messages are two. One is, here I am, here I am, here I am. The other one is, so glad you are, so glad you are, so glad you are. That's what life would be like if we didn't have to feed, if we didn't have to compete. But we do have to cooperate. We have to learn how to get along with one another. And we also have to watch out for that flood of views inside even when it's not an issue of other people. There are a lot of views that will sweep us down, that sweep us to more and more becoming, which means more and more suffering. And we need to focus on the views that will get us across, that skillful actions need to be developed, unskillful actions need to be abandoned. Suffering and stress should be comprehended, their cause should be abandoned. Their cessation should be realized, and the path to their cessation should be developed. Those are the views that get us across. As for other views, we have to learn how to let them go, because they'll pull us away. You don't want to get off the raft. If something comes floating down the river, no matter how attractive it looks, you have to watch out. If you get into the river, there are logs that come under the surface of the river, and they can knock you out. I know a case in Thailand, a family that I knew. The father had died years before. They'd been living on a raft on the side of the river, side of the river, and there was a big flood. And one day, the the baby child, the youngest in the family, fell off the raft into the river. The father had to jump in the river to save the child. He managed to do it, but while he was in the water, this huge log was coming under the water, rammed him in the ribs, and two days, <clears throat> two days later he died. Now that was a case where he had no choice. He had to go in the river. But for a lot of us, we have the choice. Especially now, people have a lot of free time. They get online, they have lots of opinions to share. And once their opinion is challenged, it's hard to let go, because you feel you're giving in to other people. 
This is why seclusion is such an important part of the practice. Physical seclusion, getting away from other people. Mental seclusion, getting some distance between yourself and your cravings. In other words, an idea comes up in the mind, and you have to ask yourself, is this part of the path or is this going to sweep me down? And no matter how right the opinion may be, there are a lot of right opinions, but they're not right view. They may be right about the world, but if you hold on to them, you get into trouble. I noticed this a decade ago in Thailand. Prior to that, very few people, Thai people, really took their political opinions all that seriously. But a certain politician came in and quickly the country was very divided. People were on one side or the other. Families split over whether this particular politician was good or bad. They had a phrase, it's hard to translate into English, it's, two people became exposed wires. In other words, when they met, there would be this huge electric shock. And so that was the phrase, this person is, is, comes from another wire, had an, opposed, an opposing opinion. And as I said, families broke up, friendships ended. And it's when people can't talk to one another like that that all kinds of things can happen in society. There are people who are all too happy to take advantage of divisiveness in society, which is why we have to be careful about our opinions. It's hard to work together, and this is a time when people need to learn to cooperate. But if you hold on hard to your opinions, cooperation is hard. When we built the jetty, at what time was it hit? I got to work with a lot of people who came from backgrounds who otherwise I would never would have met. We worked closely together, we worked on a common cause, and there's a strong sense of family. Every now and then I'd get to know their opinions about certain things, and I was really shocked. These were good people, why did they have that opinion? I realized that their goodness was more important than their opinions, so I let the issue go. We had a common cause to work on, and here we want to keep society together. Because it's so easy for a society to break apart. You start out with the social distancing, you start out with differing opinions. People get further and far, further apart physically, further and further apart mentally. How are they going to work together? Physical separation can end easily, but if you hold on to the things that separate you mentally, it's like you're in different worlds. Cooperation is difficult. So try to sort through your opinions, which ones are really important to hold on to in terms of putting an end to suffering to make you more skillful. Which ones can you let go for your own sake? You don't have to define yourself by your opinions. So try to get some seclusion, try to get away from a lot of discussions. When you're with yourself, then you can be more objective. There's no sense of territory. And you can see, this opinion I'm holding on to, it really does make me suffer or it really will make me suffer down the line. It'll get me thinking in ways that lead to more and more becoming, more and more identities. And when will it end? When you read world history, you realize that this is not the first time we've had a pandemic. This is not the first time society's been threatened. There have been a lot worse. And you want to make sure you don't make it worse by holding on to things that are going to be bad for you and bad for society. 
So hold on tight to right view. As for other views, you let them float past. Don't let them pull you under.